Good morning, tubers. Welcome back for another adventure. Today we're going to be working on this 1985 Honda ATC 200S. Many of you are looking at its condition and probably wondering what the heck happened to this poor thing. It was found abandoned, I guess off a little bit of a uh, cliff, trailside by Andrew Camarada, a fellow YouTuber. Anyway, he dragged it on home, and I believe he took some parts off of it. I think he, he took the tires and uh, front and back axles and so forth. And if you watch Andrew's stuff, he's much better than I am about moving along junk. So I got a phone call from him. We had done some previous business. Anyway, I got a phone call from him saying, Yo, if you want it, this is what I'm after for it. Come get it out of here. And I, you know... I can't resist a, a Honda ATC, so I was there in lickety-split. While I was there, I also got to see his, um, his castle that he built on top of the mountain. Guy does amazing work. Most of you probably already watch his videos. Um, he, he does a good job, so uh, it, it's really worth uh, watching his stuff. Before it was rolled off the cliff, you guys could see there was... Somebody who knew something about welding and all did some of the modifications on it. This, these plastics don't belong on here. This is not um, ATC 200S plastics. It looks like 200ES plastics off of Big Red or something like that, the way they're on there. You guys can see all the hacking and uh, cutting and we got the Frankenstein stuff and all. We got your welds to get this rack on. Um, you know, side of the engine, the plastic's broken there. You guys could see what happened to the front rack. This is also welded on the front fender. Given that it looks like it had a toe strap on it, right? Or maybe this went over the top to the back for lifting it. I don't know. Anyway, you could see it is quite abandoned and quite trashed. But I want to get the motor running, and if we can make that happen, I want to transplant it someplace else. Looks like we actually have a wire harness on here. <sighs> Headlight. It's amazing that didn't get destroyed on the roll. Even the on and off switch, which appears to work. The engine that's welded. I hate all the gear shifters. It's probably why I didn't do much with it. Everybody wants to see the tags. I mean, you guys are big on that. Anyway, let's get it over into the shade and see if we can't make it run. Let's see if this motor is viable. First thing, you got to go around a couple of times. This will give you some idea. Not much in the land of compression, that's for sure. So that's one thing you should check. The other thing appears to be neutral. Good, it goes into gear, comes out of gear. That's a plus. And, oh, everything considered, the oil actually looks halfway, halfway decent. So I borrowed the recoil. From that guy over there and <laughs> well there's something in there we better get that out so this it's not feeling like it's got a load of compression I better do a quick compression test on it here is a dry compression on this thing. I pulled the string a half a dozen times. There's no carburetor, so uh, no restriction. Anyway, I'm gonna oil it up and see what we'll get. It'll probably go up over 90, so it should start. So let's keep trucking along. If you oil up the cylinder and all, you get yourself to 120 PSI, so that's more than enough compression to start which is cool. Though the wire harness is hooked up and I disconnected the off switch here. 
Um, though that's all hooked up, I don't seem to have spark, but we could get around that with the portable CDI box. I'm going to pull these wires off. As a matter of fact, maybe I'm going to pull this cover off and just take a quick look in there. Nothing hurts worse than if the, uh, the spring's rusted out and you pull and it's all the way advanced and it kicks back and it uh, hurts one's arm. Um, yeah, we're, get, we're winding down. I got the carburetor on it and the throttle. I'm finding a lot of good parts, so I'll go through that at the end. The pulse generator situation looks real healthy. The springs are hooked up, and if you do a quick continuity test on it, you come out up at 35 ohms. So top end is real pretty. So we proved the engine's relatively sound. You can see we put the portable CDI box, a carburetor, uh, remote gas tank, right? I mean, this is all cold, by the way. I don't have an exhaust manifold on there. Um, I don't want to be pulling this forever, so you could see I got the can of starting fluid set up. Uh, it might be a little loud, obviously, no exhaust again. But let's set up the camera and see what this puppy's gonna do. Okay, I think you guys could see everything important. Once again, this is still a cold start. Remember, just a hoodle do ya. This thing doesn't have a manual choke. So, it looks like we have some life. Not quite perfect, but we got some life there. So, Andrew Camarada saved this thing, and the question is, would you have saved it? I think the answer should be yes. Just quickly, starting right in the front, the forks have some life in it. That fender, though it's nothing great, there's actually enough of it to make it saveable. Um, I put that throttle on there, but the other throttle is good. And honestly, it goes all the way to the cap and the uh, throttle slide, right? So that brings you up here. The serial number is on it, the VIN number is on it, which is a good thing. Um, it's not filed. So hopefully whoever owned it just got sick of riding it and chucked it off the end of the road I mean many bolts all over the place right um, I don't know if the on and off switch are good but it feels pretty good it does slide right but it has a lot of the bolts on it right those those aren't trivial to get as you work your way to the back the rack and the back fenders are nothing great but you could use them to kind of build yourself a bit of a rat rod um, 
the lift bar. I mean, you could cut that off, clean it up. Once again, it's rat rod quality. The frame itself really doesn't look too bad. Given that it still has the VIN, even the frame could be used again. I don't like welded shifters, and I'm always saying that. But for the cost of a gasket set, you can uh, replace that shift rod. They're not all that horrible expensive. 20, 30 bucks and a shifter, another, I don't know, 20 bucks. So one could get around that for somewhere around 50. About bringing this one back to life, um, I think I'd rather move the motor. Um, this frame here, right the rear axle's good everything's good I think I'd rather um, yeah this is a 200 s also a year older I think I'd rather you know cut this off get the lift bar onto this thing uh, clean up this frame and use this frame with that motor you know move the front fender on over right and I think I I know um, my buddy Steve hooked me up with um, seats, and I think I have some plastic floating around. So my plan is to turn this into something good. Depending where you live, different dealerships existed and different machines kind of showed up. For most of the places I go sniffing after these things, the Hudson Valley to Albany, even out Pennsylvania way and so forth, it, it seems that Honda sold a million um, ATC 200S type machines, 84, 85, 86 models, a lot of 85s out there. Seems that there's a billion of these and they held up pretty well, so one could still kind of get them for parts. By count, it's probably the most plentiful machine here at the Horde. And quite honestly, I just love working on them. There's not much about them that I haven't worked on. And if I'm not very, um, <laughs> if, if a particular item on the machine doesn't work out very well, I can kind of work my way around it. The ignition systems are easy enough to work around. Most of the China components swap right over, right? Um, the frame, the rear end, most of those pieces, um, bearings, all sprockets, all that stuff, very available so you could kind of work your way around that. The carburetor, PZ27, PZ30, available everywhere. Um, it seems very easy to get off of eBay, Amazon, whatever. So all those components are fairly plentiful. The only thing that's getting a little difficult is um, if you go under the CDI cap where the pulse generator is there, you could get the pulse generator, but that advancer is getting a little harder to put one's hot little hands on. So that that one that if you get one and that's one of the areas I check that's that's something you need to think about I think um, on eBay nowadays they've crossed 75 and worked their way toward a hundred bucks for that um, spark advancer anyway I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe I hope you guys enjoyed this video getting back to a little of the vintage stuff I wanted to get that engine popping before I went through all the trouble of moving it over to this and I succeeded at my task I'll finish troubleshooting it once it's here some of you might ask why does it fire five times and then stop the answer to that is the batteries in my portable CDI box could be weak so I get five shots and then the voltage drifts somewhere below 11 and a half 11 and a quarter 11 even and um, then the CDI box stops sparking um, <laughs> uh, and the motor dies and then you, you start it up again. It could be that or could be um, it's not drawing gas through the carburetor. It's only starting on starting fluid. The carburetor did fill with gas and I've used this carburetor recently 
on one of these machines. I guess that one, that's what I took it off of. So it, it shouldn't be the carburetor. Though these uh, China carburetors, seems like if uh, you let gas sitting, uh, sit, in, sit in them for any amount of time, particularly if you don't have a hose on them which lets air into them, um, and you don't close the choke and have an air filter on them. It seems that air and the uh, gasoline they have nowadays just ruins the carburetors real quick. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember, feet down, heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.